What's up, fam? Welcome back to another exciting edition of Keith Walker Books Reads. Today, I'm going to share a poem with you. It is titled Sorrow Home, written by Margaret Walker. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. All right, Margaret Walker, she's a phenomenal author. She's a poet and novelist. She was born in uh, 1915 in Birmingham, Alabama. Her first collection of poetry is titled For My People, went on to win the Yale Series of Younger Poets Award. And her first novel, Jubilee, was published in 1966. And it's regarded as the first truly historical Black American novel. All right, so I'm going to read through the poem and then offer an analysis when I'm done. Sorrow Home. My roots are deep in Southern life, deeper than John Brown or Nat Turner or Robert Lee. I was sired and weaned in a tropic world, the palm tree and banana leaf, mango and coconut, breadfruit and rubber trees know me. Warm skies and gulf blue streams are in my blood. I belong with the smell of fresh pine, with the trail of coon and the spring growth of wild onion. I am no hothouse bulb to be reared in steam heated flats with the music of L and subway in my ears, walled in by steel and wood and brick far from the sky. I want the cotton fields, tobacco and the cane. I want to walk along with sacks of seed to drop in fallow ground. Restless music is in my heart and I am eager to be gone. O oh, Southland, sorrow home, melody beaten in my bone and blood. How long will the clan of hate, the hounds, and the chain gangs keep me from my own? All right, so that's the poem. As far as an analysis, the, the title Sorrow Home is referring to her sorrow when thinking about what she considers her home, which is in the South. So she starts off the poem indicating that her roots are deep in the, deep in the South, uh, deeper than John Brown, Nat Turner, or Robert Lee. So those men she was referring to, John Brown, he was a famous abolitionist. He lived from 1800 to 1859. Nat Turner, he um, was the leader of one of the biggest slave rebellions like ever. Um, this was in 1831. It was unsuccessful. He ended up getting killed and 200 more uh, black people and slaves ended up getting put to death because of it. But it was a big deal at the time. And Robert Lee is referring to Robert E. Lee, who was the, who was the commander of the uh, Confederate Army. And she's saying her roots in the South are deeper than all of this, which is pretty deep. Um, she says, um, warm skies and uh, gulf blue streams are in my blood. I belong with the smell of fresh pine with the trail of coon and the spring growth of wild onions. So these are all American Southern things. The only thing I'm a little bit confused on in this poem would be the trail of coon. So I know a uh, coon is a reference to raccoon, typically in the South, that's what they call raccoons, just coon. And, but trail of coon, I've never heard that phrase before. That's probably a phrase we don't use anymore. Um, I can assume a trail of coon is a raccoon trail, but for the life of me, I can't imagine why anyone would think that's something remarkable to long for, but maybe it is. Maybe there's, and maybe trail of coon has nothing to do with raccoons. I, I personally, I don't know. I did some research and I still couldn't figure this one out. So if you know what trail of coon is, please post it in the comment section. I would love to find out, but it just may be a raccoon trail and that's just a part of Southern life that she longs for. The rest of the poem I do have though. She says, I'm no hot house bug to be reared in steam heated flats. These are um, building types that were typically up north in the Chicago, New York area with the music of L and Subway in my ears. So basically she says she's not a city girl. She's living there, but this is not the life for her. Walled in by steel and wood and brick far from the sky. So that area she's describing there, steel, wood, brick far from the sky, that's a subway system, so she, which obviously would be far away from the sky. She's saying this life is not for her. Um, but instead, she says, I want the cotton fields, tobacco and the cane. I want to walk along with Saxo seed to drop in fallow ground. Now, this particular stanza, the first time I read it, it was a little... 
it, I was a little taken aback by it because when you think of someone who who was born in 1915, so they they grew she grew up in the South and saw some of the ugliest things that were were happening to Black people at the time. I mean, Jim Crow was in full flare. We got the lynchings and all of that. And also, when you think about cotton fields, you would you would automatically think about slavery. But she says, I want the cotton fields, tobacco and the cane. All of these were crops that were typical slave crops. So the first time I read it, it was a little interesting that she would long for this. But this also reminds me of an analysis I did for another poem. So I did a Strange Fruit. And while reading that poem, I, I commented on the, the imagery of how beautiful the South was but you also had a black body swinging in a tree. So at the, I'm not gonna harp on the point I was making then, but this, is, this goes back to it. Cause when you think about the South, even if you think about a plantation, that, that is probably a beautiful place. I mean, to be honest, all plantations today, if you were to go look at one, you would probably agree it's a beautiful place, but you can't have it without the hatred and the bad things that went with it. So uh, Margaret Walker, she's up north. She's longing to be back in the South because it is a beautiful thing. A cotton field minus the slaves is a beautiful thing. But what's sad about it is the thing that's keeping her from returning home, which she references in the final stanza. She says, oh, Southland sorrow home, a melody beating in my bone and blood. How long will a clan of hate, the hounds and the chain gang keep me from my own? So the things that are keeping her from returning home is the clan of hate, which would be the KKK, the hounds, which would be the dogs that the KKK typically use to chase down black people, sometimes before they lynch them, and the chain gangs. The chain gangs are referring to uh, basically when you get arrested, black people in particular back then, whether you make it to prison or you're still in jail, they put you in chains and put you out on the field and make you work. They get free labor out of it and they call it a punishment for whatever crime they accuse you of. But sometimes the crime was very insignificant or in some cases there were no crime at all, but you still got locked up and subjected to this. So she says all of these things are still going on in the South and that's what's keeping her from returning home, which which is why she refers to it as her sorrow home. All right, so that's my take on this poem. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit the like button, post a comment, let me know what you thought of it, especially if you know what a trail of coon is. I need to know. I mean, is a raccoon trail that awesome? I mean, it might be. I've never seen one that I thought was that awesome. And by the way, if you've been staring at this eye over here wondering, what's going on with this dude's eye? I got a sty. I mean, it happens. People get infections from now, from time to time. It's going away, though. It actually looks better than it did yesterday. But anyway, next time I post a video, I'm sure it'll be completely gone. If you just stumbled across this channel, you're not subscribed to my, uh, stumbled across this video, and you're not subscribed to my channel, this would be a great time to hit the subscribe button. I'd love to see you around again. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you next time.